and I saw this model that kind of looked like you. Wow. It looks like he's smiling. And I just want it to be as naturalistic as it can. A little slice of the mountains. A big sloth. Wow. He's That's a big giraffe. Whoa. You got a big purple tongue, don't you, buddy? Just do it. Lifestyle. All right, this is going to be a fun stop. <laughs> I'm Greg with Sock the Pond Guy. This is my channel, Greg with Sock the Pond Guy, and it's all about showcasing how people live the aquascape lifestyle, which sometimes includes alligators and eagles, huh? That's right. I'm out here with Mystic Water Gardens, and what town are we in? We are in Silmar, California, and we're gonna go meet Fluffy the alligator. <laughs> Stay tuned. They sell cotta tortoises. Yep. Boy. That ain't the life in that sun right there. This is cool. So it's kind of like an education center for yeah, kids. Yeah, and... a lot of uh, birthday parties here, and it's just, yeah, it's just a cute little zoo, and I love it. Oh, cool. Look at this hawk. Look at that. What's up, buddy? What's Fluffy's up? Fluffy's getting some sun. Oh, that looks great, Steve. Oh, there you Oh, wow. And he came from the Wildlife Way Station, according to Mitch. Which we just found out today, right? Yes. And we worked at the Wildlife Way Station. In fact, we'll put a link to the wetland filter that we put at the Wildlife Way Station right here. Okay, so I see the Aquascape skimmer over there. I see Fluffy, and you were actually in there I was in with there. him, and yep. they were guarding yep. against him. <laughs> yeah. We got a picture so of that. I was putting some uh, vines, some jasmine over the waterfall. I was doing a little baby tear on the log. So what was here before? The poor thing was in a tiny little Rubbermaid uh -huh. tank. Uh -huh. So uh, they called me, and you know, I came up with the design. This is actually a, a slab pad? with a heating element yeah, yeah, in it yep. for uh, Fluffy to... This is really cool. So you put a biofalls on one side, skimmer on the other, and then put an ecosystem pond in the middle. And he just climbs in and out of it, huh? Yep, and then we did a little concrete cloth on the edge. Oh, yeah, so he wouldn't use his claws. So what we do with the concrete cloth is we put the unalignment down, we put the liner down, and then we put the concrete cloth on top of it, and then the stone. And the concrete cloth will actually uh, prevent the animal from damaging the liner if the rocks move. Wow, that is a big gator. He's just, just repositioning himself there. You got the life, buddy. It looks like he's smiling. Hello. How are you? I'm David. Hi, David. I'm the pond guy, Greg. Yeah, nice to meet you. Are, are you the one that hired this young man to do this? Yes, we are lucky, really fortunate to have found him. I was talking to a guy named Mitch Paca today, uh -huh. and he said that he thinks Fluffy came from the Wildlife Way Station. No. Oh, okay. Oh, no, he was someone's pet, yeah. Oh, pet? This was someone's pet? That was someone's pet. It's it, Alligator's one of the more commonly kept illegal pets. But that's a big alligator. Yeah, I've had him for a long time. We've had him since he was about this big. Oh, okay, okay. So we think it's a female, so if that's the case, then she won't get too, too much bigger, but male to get over that is feet yeah, oh yeah i was just feeding yeah. ones at camp kennan's oh what's that <laughs> kennan harkin in florida and he just got a couple of alligators oh. from his buddy fred and we were down there yeah. so david is this your place are you the manager of this yeah. place yeah and how long have you been here since the beginning about 25 years so you started it yeah so you're crazy <laughs> i'm crazy <laughs> yeah, well, i just haven't given up i don't know why <laughs> so what is the story of this place we started 25 years ago just doing outreach schools to teach about biology with a couple animals and as people learned about us we were going to these schools and doing these programs they came to us with unwanted pets wildlife officials who would find it injured wildlife would sometimes come to us and so it started to grow we were doing outreach to schools in LAUSD which is the second largest school district in the country so we were doing a lot of programs with them and that required hiring more people to do programs and taking in more animals we eventually found this place about 15 years ago and opened it up to the public so people could come see where the animals live wow <laughs> and Steve did this one and then he yeah. also did one for American Eagle for our bald eagles yeah wow yeah, and I it's, am it's so excited yeah. about this enclosure. Yeah. I love eagles. We're almost completed. We have a little pond in there, and I'm so excited to show you. Can we check it out? Let's go check it out. All right. <laughs> Okay, so this is the future exhibit. Is that so Steve's guy? Yeah. Oh, okay. So how did you get started? Turtles. No way. Yeah, I like turtles. I like turtles. Really? Yes, really. <laughs> Where do you live? Chicago. Oh, you do? Okay. I'm Where the pond you, guy. Do you have uh, right red-eared sliders? Do I have red-eared sliders? That's the number turtles? one. What kind of turtles? Yeah. Well, my wife calls me a turtle hoarder. So aquatic turtles, all aquatic. I don't yeah. have, you know, sulcatas yeah. and tortoises yeah. and everything. Yeah, we have plenty of turtles. Everybody brings me red-eared sliders. Yeah, and you see, know. that was the, what happened with us. People learn that you're doing stuff with animals, and it just, you know, it doesn't stop. Have you always they had a heart do. for animals, though? Oh, Since yeah. you were a kid? Ever since I was a little kid. I yeah. love it. So, Steve, this is a beautiful exhibit. So, was this the old? 
old American Bald Eagle, what was here before? Right. Yeah, the same footprint, a much nicer environment for them. And because bald eagles, they like water, they always occur yeah. next to a body of water because they're mostly fish eaters. Yes. So this will be an enriching environment for them too because it has water. We can put fish in there. Yeah. They'll actually come down and dive down and get some fish. They'll go in the water. You think they'll eat the fish? Oh, yeah. Oh. I gotta yeah. get that out to, you got, see what you need to do, you need to put a live feed in here because people will want to see that. Yeah. Yeah. Would you guys like to see a live feed of American bald eagles in their enclosure actually naturally going and hunting fish? I would. So Steve, explain what you did here. So we started with the water feature. We have a little, it's about a six by eight pond. It's a stream, waterfall. We have a biofalls, we have a skimmer. But for me, I want to give it like the feel we're in the mountains. The trees are very important. Yes. The actual enclosure, as you can see, we're using some rustic lodgepole pine timber. On the bottom of the oh, so you guys are building the whole enclosure. We're the whole enclosure. Yeah. Wow. So I you're not just a pond guy. <laughs> I'm the enclosure guy. Yeah, I want to really give it a feel like we're in the mountains. So nice. I love nature. I love eagles. Who doesn't? I searched all over for these trees. These are uh, Australian black pines, and I just want it to be as naturalistic as it can. A little slice of the mountains here at the Wildlife Learning Center. You got the right guy for the job. Absolutely. Never doubted it. Truly. So we're at the Eagle enclosure. We built this water feature. Wanted to find some trees that give the feel we're in the mountains. We have these beautiful little black pines. Flowing water feature. Starting to incorporate some baby tear and plants in the water feature. We have some Mugo pines. We have an Ocascape skimmer. I'm gonna be getting some driftwood. It's gonna be a beautiful enclosure for the birds. They're gonna have some interaction with the water. And we're so excited to get this enclosure wrapped up. So I was looking to buy some new underwear and I saw this model that kind of looked like you. Uh, it was it was uh, my brother. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't me. <laughs> Wrong guy. Steve Sandals is best friends with Fabio. I can't believe it's no bother. Mr. Romance Novel himself. You didn't know that. He didn't tell you that. That's not how we got the job, huh? You're saying you liked his hair. <laughs> yeah, give me some. I love my job. So just like commercial water features that I see that most aren't up to snuff, it's the same thing with zoos. I love the fact that this private zoo is investing in aquascape ecosystem water features for its animals, but we have been building water features in zoos for the beginning of time, and most of them are made out of concrete, most of them are high maintenance, and most of them are ecosystem approach to work with mother nature, not against her. It's very utilitarian, as zoo looks at it. It might look aesthetically somewhat pleasing, but it doesn't function like an ecosystem. You know, when we had our TV show Pond Stars, we built ponds for the Lincoln Park Zoo, and we took the what was an eyesore and what was a hard challenge for the uh, zookeepers to maintain, and we made it super simple. We've been building water features at zoos all over the world, Australia, you know, all over the United States, and everywhere we build water features, it's always an easier, lower maintenance, and better for the animals. More people need to be understanding what an aquascape ecosystem is not just about simple maintenance for a consumer or a homeowner, it's about better care for the animals. That's a big sloth. Is this a Costa Rican or? Most of these, oh, that is a big sloth. Sloths have an indoor outdoor enclosure. So let me ask you, what's the next aquascape water feature we need here? We even talked about, I know this would be amazing. Like a little stream that ran through somewhere. Yeah, when you walk into the facility, I want like a stream and a bridge. So you're crossing over some, that would be some so water cool. to get to the, yes. to the beautiful. It'll, it'll set, it sets the mood. It sets the mood, exactly. What we really need is more space. <laughs> How much property do you have? This is it, it's just an acre. Wow, it's an it's acre it's of it. fun. I could tell you that. So we need more space, which is a goal. What is the craziest thing, I would love to hear this, about running a place like this? Pe that people wouldn't expect or... The question, right? Thing. Yeah, the craziest thing. The first thing that comes to mind is diversity of diets uh -huh. and how specialized exotic animal diets can be, especially mm -hmm. the sloths. They require a specialized diet, but getting them to eat that diet can sometimes be challenging too. Interesting, uh-huh. So they, they have a tendency to be really picky. So getting the right nutrients in them is a challenge. What's the favorite animal you've ever kept? Uh, that's hard to tell. I love them all. What's uh, the most it, amount of physical pain you've ever been in? Probably from a bite from a lynx. <laughs> <laughs> On the hand. Oh no, take that back. Actually, a woodchuck. A woodchuck bit me Stuck right in the chest. chest, and that hurt like you wouldn't believe. Because I got I big holding, and scissors. I was holding them like this. And he clamped down on my... <laughs> 
chest. <laughs> it was yeah. lots. Was it lots? Of my them. whole chest was bruised. <laughs> wow. There's so much bleeding in the muscle. Yeah. They could open their mouth pretty wide, so he was able to get more than just skin. A woodchuck. Muscle. A yeah. woodchuck. This is nice. Can't believe it's an acre. I love all the sounds when you walk around. Kids love it. No, I haven't seen it yet. So a lot of schools, huh? A lot of scout groups, a lot of individuals. And this is where the giraffe lives, huh? Yeah, back there. <laughs> yeah. For real? Yeah. You have a giraffe? Well, it's not ours. But still, you got a giraffe here? Yeah. You Can we see it? it? Yeah. <laughs> I love my job. Thought you only had an acre. Well, that's not counting this area. Okay. This is a company that trains animals for totally the move. Oh, okay. Yeah. Holy cow! You open it up and there it is. Wow, it's that's a big giraffe. Ooh, you got a big purple tongue, don't you, buddy? Oh, it's like standing next so to a dinosaur. Beautiful. That is really, really cool. How old is this giraffe? It's about four now. Wow, that's only four years old. Yeah, they grow incredibly fast. There's a so. point in their life when they grow it about an inch a day. So Dave, I, I've got one question for you. Okay. Do you love your job? I love my job. <laughs> I, I love, love my job as you do. Amen. <laughs>